my brother during Christmas time, my brother and I, it's the best. Okay, so we're just going to jump right in oh, because okay. you're already talking about hot cocoa. Okay. So you make it for your brother for Christmas all the time and the holidays? Every holiday, um, yeah, every Christmas time, I always make hot cocoa for my brother and I. It's the best. It's a must. Like, it's not Christmas unless I do that. <laughs> do you add anything to your hot cocoa to spice it up? Whipped cream. And I kind of just keep it pretty basic. Maybe some cinnamon on top, but Ooh. only on mine because my brother doesn't like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, spice. So, um, do you like drink hot cocoa during the summer? No, I don't. It's only a wintertime thing, like Christmas time, winter. Yeah. Because I like to keep my hot drinks in the cold and my cold drinks in the hot. Okay. If that makes sense. Makes sense. I, uh, well, uh, we're going to do this a little later. Like, we're going to, like, she's going to tell us if, uh, Allie Brooks here. So, yeah. Hi. She's here. Yeah. We know her. She's my homies. In, in the legendary group Fifth Harmony. She she started there. She's gone on to do her own solo stuff. You're on Dancing with the Stars. So you've done quite a bit over the past few years uh, to get to where we're at. So we are talking hot cocoa because after the interview, she's going to try some three different flavors of hot cocoa and tell, the, tell us if it's good or or no good hey. because the new song is no good <laughs> which definitely stream it up run it up the charts do all that good stuff it's yes. an amazing song thank you so much really enjoy it and it feels good right now like this time of the year just feels good it, it's hitting right yeah i think so too thank you so much no problem I'm so happy you love the record um so you're you let, let's just let's uh, i have like one Tough question. The rest is just all like Ooh. light. It's not really tough. So what do you think the hardest part of transitioning from like Fifth Harmony, being in such a powerful group like that in people loving all of you guys together mm -hmm. and then you go to your own and you're you're doing your own solo thing. So what was the hardest thing about transitioning from a group into the solo? I think kind of showing people who I was like having my own identity. I think whenever you kind of... um you know, you go from being a group to solo artist. It's so important to have your own identity. And for me, it was about finding the right team to really fulfill like the visions that I had for myself, for my music, for my artistry. And I found that team. Um, and once that happened, everything else came together. And I had to be really patient in releasing my music because I didn't want to just throw anything out there because, oh, you know, I got to hurry up, and get a single out while, you know, Whoever's Whatever. going, yeah. Exactly. I wanted to make sure that it was quality music, you know, so I took my time. It was a lot longer than people had anticipated, but it was totally worth the wait because um, my first single that I had low-key went top, what was it, tw 20 at Top 40 Radio? It did really radio. good. Yeah, and um, obviously my songs after that have done so well, and I've been on the road, and tour and all this crazy stuff and dancing with the stars so yeah it's it's been unbelievable it's nice to hear that you decided to take your time not rush it out focus on the music focus on yourself really let the fans and everybody know who you are yeah instead of like who you were with the group because totally. i mean you're still the same person in a group but solo it's it it's is completely different absolutely and i feel like people didn't get a chance to see me or what I was capable of or my potential pretty much at all in the group. So it was amazing to kind of break free from that. You know, I'll always be, you know, grateful for it and the platform that it gave me. But it's so amazing to be on my own. So much better and more fun. And I'm having the time of my life. It's crazy. Dancing with the stars. The final stop is tonight. Yeah. Right? And it's right here in Albany. Woo! So hopefully you're going to be out there checking that out tonight at the Times Union Center. Yes. What's that been like? Oh, man, it has been a ride. It's been incredible. Um, I was on the show, of course, Dancing with the mm -hmm. Stars, and I was so nervous to do it at first because I had a lot of insecurity about my dancing. But great thing that I did it because it totally transformed me and my confidence and, and just who I was as a person. And of course, as a dancer, I feel like I can take on anything now. Um, and I learned so much on the show. I gained so many amazing memories and opportunities, friendships for life. And I've showed people who I was and what like the, the 
almost peak of my uh, capability as a performer and dancer that people never saw. And that really got people to be like, wow, like what? This Who's this girl? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so that was really incredible because I really wanted that for so long to show people like this is what I can do. And I want to thank my partner, Sasha, for that. And, and Dancing with the Stars for asking me to be a part of it. So now I'm on the tour. I've only been on for a week, and tonight will be my last one because I have, um, you know, I have to get ready for my own tour. Right. Um, but it's been so much fun, so amazing to reunite with um, Sasha and all of my other friends on the show. It's been it's been incredible. I'm, I'm certainly going to be sad um, leaving everyone. We're lucky that we actually get to see if you've only been on the tour for like a week, and yeah. one of the stops is here right in Albany. So whoop, that whoop. is... That's pretty awesome right there. I find it interesting to say that, you know, you're a little bit insecure about your dancing. And it's like, we know you from singing and dancing. I know it's like ironic, right? It's like, But it's weird. a completely different type of dancing. It is. Are you going to be taking like what you learned in a sense on Dancing with the Stars, which is, I guess, more of the professional <laughs> type Yeah, of like dancing? ballroom. Absolutely. I'm going to carry that into my my career and everything moving forward and especially in my solo tour um i go out on my first ever headlining solo tour in march which you guys are all invited and check it out um you can go to my website alleybrook.com and also on my social media um i have all the list of dates over there you could buy tickets and buy vip packages um but i'm so i'm pretty indescribably excited about it like it's it's a huge deal for an artist and Especially for me, it's a dream come true, and I can't wait to to go out there and really show people that it's my real time to shine. Right. This <laughs> is all about you here. But what are you going to do now for this month that you basically, I don't want to say you have off. Yeah, <laughs> right. But Never. what are you going to do in between from now till March, was it March 6th you kick off in Chicago? I think so, yes. So um, I actually, of course, I'm going to prepare. So that's going to take a minute, you know, definitely a few weeks um, to to get together my set list and the dancing and choreography and everything. But in between that, you might see me pop up at a few shows. Ooh. Surprises. Okay, so we just got to keep our ears and eyes open for exactly. that. Exactly. Oh, so I'll, exciting. I'll, I'll leave you with that. Are you going to be... Um... You're going to be doing that. You're going to spend t some time with your family, I assume, and before yes. you hit the road. Do you does your family go on the road with you? Like, who do you bring oh on the road God. with you usually? That's what I'm thinking of um, right now, actually. So I hope when I'm on tour that my parents can come out, my brother, cousins. Man, we'll see We'll see what happens. We'll see what I can actually fit on my bus. <laughs> um, but that would be amazing. For sure, I would love my parents to come because it's such a gift. You know, it's like such a special right. thing. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly, I'm going to be pretty busy until my tour. So I don't know if I'll have time to go home, but hopefully I can go home for like two days or something. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be working on a lot of different projects and getting ready for different shows. So I'm really excited. I'm hyped. <laughs> Are you going to possibly put out any more new music before the tour or during Actually, the tour? I think there might be like a collab. Ooh. Coming out before March. Um, you want to say who it's with? Maybe another one. <gasps> I think I have to let this person say it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <let this> <laughs> <say> it. <laughs> well, that's exciting because uh, No Good is out right now, like we were saying in the beginning, and we're going to play it at the end of the interview Ooh, and everything. Thank you, um, Jams. <laughs> uh, so when you were uh, putting uh, putting together No Good and everything, what was your mm -hmm. how, like? what's your process of putting together a song as you, the solo artist, yeah. You doing it yourself. It varies. So um, sometimes I'll be in a room with different writers and we'll start co-writing together. Or sometimes I hear records that are sent to me. In this case, um, that's what it was for No Good. And I uh, heard this record and I completely was like, oh my God, this record's amazing. I love it. I love the message, first of all, because it's talking about not accepting anything that is no good for you. Mm. The The lyrics literally, literally say... You're no good for me. I don't need nobody. <laughs> I don't need no one. That's no good for me. And that's such a great message to, to share with everybody, share with the world. And I love the music behind it. It has this disco pop chic vibe. I love real strings and they're in it. We actually brought a real violinist to um, play the strings that you hear 
in the record and I fell in love and I recorded it literally within like two days and then we loved it so much we were like okay we got to get it out to the world so come record it make sure you love it and then go so that's how it happened that's pretty awesome like just to hear that you even got like live instruments playing on it because that's yeah you know that don't really happen so much nowadays so yeah. to, to hear that that's pretty cool right there do you hope to incorporate more oh yeah possibly live totally instruments on your music totally i'm such a big fan of of instruments and real music because i grew up on everything from like 70s to 80s music 90s and um you know they used a lot of real instruments so whenever i get to implement that in my own music is really special who's some of your favorite artists growing up I loved everyone from, of course, Selena. She knows she's wearing Selena shirt. A-Dub over there. She's got the Selena shirt on. She does mornings on the station. Yes, girl. (laughs) She knows. Um, She's my number one. But I love everybody from Justin Timberlake to Jennifer Lopez, Shakira, Gloria Estefan, um, Adele, Bruno Mars. I gravitate towards performers Mm -hmm. slash singers. And I also love Britney Spears because... She's an amazing performer. She's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, and Britney Spears definitely got to throw her out there. And she like defines right. that whole like 90s anyways. Totally, yeah. Like I as love... like a little girl growing up, you, how could you not like escape Britney Spears at all? Right. Uh, Especially in the 90s. Totally. Oh my God, I love her. But yeah, those are some of the different artists that have impacted me for sure. Now, one of the performances that you did this year, um, or... I should say, last year. All that. Oh, my God, dude. Talk about childhood. I was going to say, you watched it growing up, right? Oh, did I? My brother and I, oh, my gosh. What kid wasn't obsessed with all that For in real? the 90s and the, two, to the 2000s? I literally, well, when I heard it was coming back, I freaked out. Let alone when I found that I was going to perform on it. I was like, what? This is so crazy. Because I was obsessed with Keenan and Kel mm-hmm. and all that. And... Another amazing, ironic thing is that Kel was actually on Dancing with the Stars with me. That's crazy. <laughs> it was literally like, man, last year was pretty incredible. I basically died because I was like, <laughs> all my childhood dreams are coming true in this very moment. Um, yeah, so that was so special to perform at all that. You know, it was like, whoa, this is this is insane. And um my brother was so excited, too. He was like, what, Allie? No way. He's older than me. He's four years older. Um, but, yeah, he's just so proud and protective, and it was amazing. That's pretty awesome right there because, like, yeah. I was looking through every, like, you know, all the big, like, moments that you've had throughout the years and performing on Good Morning America and performing on this show and this show. Yes. And then I see all that, and I'm like, all that. Dude. Watch the performance. Amazing. Thank you. I... I was like, this is so cool. Just, it's all that. Like, right? You it's can't... all that. Like, that's all I can say. It's all that. Exactly. That's all you need to say. It's pretty phenomenal. Um. So before we get out of here, and we're going to do this hot chocolate thing in a Ooh. second. Um. Very important question for you. Okay. This is, it's going to, you're going to have to think hard about this one mm, here. Okay. I'm prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Of course, you know what the Yeezys are. Yes. If you had a fake pair of Yeezys and you had Kanye sign the fake Yeezys, okay. are they real Yeezys? Ooh. Hard hitting questions here. That's that's a really tough one. Well, that's really <laughs> tough. I think I I think the real that you have to have the real Yeezys. You have to. That's that's where I would that's my answer. I think the real ones are the real ones. And a cereal soup? Cereal soup? Yeah. No. It's, it has like liquid and it, I mean, couldn't milk be considered broth? Wow. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Milk is milk and broth is broth. It's black and white. <laughs> awesome. Well, Ellie Brooke, thank you so much for stopping on by. Thank you, man. Um, the new song, this No Good. Fun. We're about to get into it, but um, Ooh. also stream it on Spotify, Apple Music, download it however you're listening to your yes, music. Please. Check it out. Also, she is at uh, 
Time Genius Center for Dancing with the Stars tonight. Yes. We're one of the lucky shows, which I, I didn't know that you weren't on the whole tour. And I sort of find out that you were only on for the past weekend. Yeah. This is one that stops. It's pretty awesome. So get on uh, out. Yes, please. And when I come into town for my solo tour called the Time to Shine Tour, come on out. Please, please, please buy tickets. They're available now. They're on your website and website, all that stuff. Website, social media. Yeah. What's your, what's your handle? At Allie Brook, A L L Y B R O O K E. Awesome. Allie Brook, thank you so much. Thank you. And, uh, you know, much continued success to you. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate all the love. Mwah. It's Jam 96.3. Woo! That was so dope.